Hello my friends and welcome to a very special episode because school is starting soon and learning is really important so I've prepared five cool tricks that you can watch together with your children or grandchildren but they are also very nice and interesting as basics for people who are already adult and even if you're experienced with photo editing. So let's get started. And the first thing we're going to look at are complementary colors and this might really surprise you. So what you want to do is select the brush tool set the brush to a good size, opacity 100%, flow 100%, hardness 100%, and you wanna create a new pixel layer like this one, and we're gonna select a color up here. So we're gonna start with red, very simple basic color, there we go, red. And next we're gonna take our move tool and we hold control on the keyboard and move this over so we have a duplicate of that. and. Now comes the surprising part because we are going to invert the color and this will give us the inverted or complementary color and depending on your age you might give a different answer what that might be. So what is the complementary color of red? Let's have a look. Aha! Uh -huh, it's blue. There we go. If you guessed that the complementary color is green you are probably a little bit older because the difference is we are working here on a screen and the screen works with light. So this is another kind of complementary color than you would have in a print color or pigment color. Also an interesting thing to learn for your children too because they might mostly in their lifetime work with screens. So what's the difference? Let's have a look here. Complementary colors, Wikipedia. And here you have the two different color schemes. So this is what we experienced a minute ago. Red turns to blue. And this is because this is based on RGB. And RGB means red, green, blue. And this is how light is mixing. And the screen is working with light. So the base colors of a screen are red, green and blue. But when you print on paper and when you paint with your pigments, with your watercolor, the base colors are RYB, so they are red, yellow and blue, and those mix differently. So this means that red turns into green, as you can see here. So this is why I said probably your age, because of course the older generation is more accustomed to print and print colors and of course in the school we learned this as the complementary colors while maybe this is now the favorite model because stuff is mostly done on screen so it's a very interesting and nice guessing game let's do one more real quick i make a new layer select my brush tool let's go with the color blue for example and click here and again move it over by holding control there we go and then we are going to invert the layer and it's going to turn into yellow actually. So this is very interesting and it's very nice to find out what these complementary colors are. Very nice guessing game that is very good for learning these complementary colors and also understanding why they work differently on a screen than on paper. Okay, so this was the first cool trick. The next one is about, um, how can I say, about contrast and brightness. So we are going to take our rectangle tool and this is kind of an optical illusion. So it's really cool and it's really interesting also to learn for people who edit their pictures because this will tell you why the background in your photo software is actually a darker or medium gray. So we are going to create a first rectangle and you can create a square by holding the shift key while dragging your mouse and click on the fill color over here go to grayness and we will set this to a lighter gray so we set it to 80 there we go and then we're going to copy this so con hold control drag with your mouse again click on fill color and now we are going to set this to 20 and now we are making another copy and then we are going to hold our shift key to make this smaller but still keep it a square and again change the fill color and now we are setting it to 50 which is a medium gray so there we go medium gray and 
Now the magic happens. If I, you can see, this is a medium gray square. If I pull it in here, you can see it's getting pretty dark. This is a pretty dark gray. But if I take the same square, move it over here, you can see this is a pretty bright gray. And it actually looks like this gray now is almost the same as this gray over here. But when I move these two together, you can see in the middle that it's not changing. It's the same color. But even now that we know it, if I move it over here, it's still a light gray. And then I move it over here, it's still a dark gray. So this is really interesting. And this is also telling you why the background in our editing software is gray. Because this will allow us, if we adjust the picture, to see the colors neither too bright nor too dark in context. And this is also telling us a lot about how our our uh, how our eye sees or better said our brain sees because the eye is just capturing the light but the brain is analyzing it and it tells us that we don't just see colors or contrasts or brightnesses we see them in context to the surrounding and this is why the color is changing because the brain is interpreting what it's the eye is seeing in a different way so this is really interesting to know and understand and helps you a lot with editing pictures also uh, because you should have your software always set to um, a medium or darker gray okay so let's go on to the next one the next one is the blend modes and this is also really cool to know um, maybe you didn't know that so let's make two rectangles again there we go. And if we blend them, I will take two gray um, rectangles, move them above each other, and then we go to the blend modes. And what you might not have known is that actually the blending is just a mathematical formula. And some of the blend modes are actually named after the math that is happening. So we can look in here, and here it says multiply. So Every value here of color and brightness is a number, yeah? So if I have both of these numbers and I'm going to multiply them, I'm getting a different number. And this means a different number is giving me a different brightness and a different color value. So you can see here, of course, now we are just working with gray. So this is just one, uh, it's just changing the brightness, but if I would change this to a different color, let's do this real quick. Let's make this um, green and the other one yellow and I mix those. Okay, this was not, <laughs> was not the best idea. Let's see, you can see here, this works better. You can see that also the color value is changing because it's multiplying with the background. So this is really interesting. And we have two more that are named after math functions. So we have add here. And down here, of course, we have subtract. And also, we can see here the effect. Let's set this back to gray real quick. Uh, let's set this to 50. There we go. And the other one to 50 also. Um, there we go. Okay, you can see here, depending on what I'm doing, how much I in this case add to it so with black if it's completely black you can see that i'm adding nothing to it so this gray is staying the same but the more i add the brighter it gets until it gets completely white and of course when it is completely white there's nothing more to add so it adds 100 um but here with it, if it adds 50 you can see here 50 both of them are 50, so together 50 plus 50 is 100, and 100 is the brightest that you can have, so of course it's turning white. And if it's under 50, it's a very light gray. So this is also very interesting to know, and it's a, it's a kind of different way to understand math, and also to explain to your children, well, if they ask, what do you need math for? Well to do nice graphics, all these cool Star Wars graphic effects they see in cinema and stuff like that, they all are based on calculations. And here you can show to them how this works 
in a very simple way, in a very basic way. Okay, so that was that trick. Really interesting having maths work in a cool way in your photo software. Okay, let's go to the next one. This, this next one is even more interesting. <laughs> and this is about this. You might have heard about those rays. They look really cool and they are an optical illusion again. And um, they are a very strange thing that is actually called crepuscular rays. And what this is, not only, um, it's not only, uh, uh, how can I say, optical illusion, it's also about perspective. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a rectangle. There we go. And I will rasterize it real quick. There we go. And now we're going to take our perspective tool. There we have it. And you can see we have all these grid lines here. And when I pull this up like this, as we would construct perspective. And the interesting thing for you kit is to understand that this is how we construct a 3D optical illusion on a 2D space. So if we want to draw something 3D, we have to use these kind of perspective constructions. You can see the plane is changing. It looks like it's a 3D software, but actually everything is happening in a 2D space. So this is really interesting. But what you can also see is when I do this, it looks like as though I am small and I'm looking up onto a skyscraper from the, from the ground. And let's apply this real quick. Well, if we look at this, this is actually the same thing we can see here. So what does that mean for us? This actually means that all these lines that we can see here are converging to one point. That point is the sun. But this also means that all of these lines are actually um, parallel to each other. They are not pyramid shaped. They're not moving um, like, how can I say? Uh, like uh, from, a, from a light bulb and um, our eye just can't understand this because it is comparing the rays to the background and the background does look normal while the foreground is skewed in perspective converging lines towards a point. So you might think, how, how can this happen? This, is, this can't be real. So the easy explanation to understand why this is working, let's, let me show you real quick how this is working out. So if you have the ground here, our eye is thinking, let's change the color real quick. Um, <laughs> our eye is thinking that it's happening like this. Wow, this is a really bad line. This is also very bad. I just want to make a straight line. There we go. So what our eye is thinking is that the sun is up here and the rays are just going down. And so they have to be like this coming from one point, like you would see from a bulb. I'm sorry, this looks really crappy, but um, yeah. But what is actually happening is it's not here. The sun is not here above the ground. Of course not. The sun is actually, oh, let's take another color. Let's take green. Uh, perfect sun color, of course, green. <laughs> the sun is over, actually over here. So the rays are going back here, very long rays. And they are, as you can see, in a, in a, in a dion uh, diagonal plane, moving backwards into space, fleeing backwards from us into space on a very, very long distance. And this is why if you would have a plane that's moving here backwards, for a very long distance in the sky, this would be a immensely huge building if you would build that. And of course, even with parallel lines, these lines would converge. And this is why, of course, these mountains are just going straight up while the light is moving back for, I don't know, maybe hundreds of kilometers until it hits the sky. Um, so this is why this looks that way. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> 
uh, I hope this was a good explanation. I think it's a really cool thing to look at and to understand about perspective about light. The last one is really easy, very fun, and you can do it as an adult and also as a child. And this is just color painting, actually. And if you are sick on uh, spending all the money for color painting, the good thing is if you have an iPad, but even if you have the desktop version of Affinity Photo, just go to your Google page to images and enter color book pictures and then click on tools. That's important. Click on tools here and set them to large. And then it will select just the large pictures. And you can see there's a huge variety. A lot of them are good for children because they're very rough in their structure. But you can also find very nice detailed pictures for adults uh, that um, require a much better eye and hand coordination. But they are very how can I say, relaxing to color in. So what you're going to do is you just download the picture and you're going to open it up in Affinity Photo, as I've done here. And you're going to create a new pixel layer and set it to multiply. And then you can just select any kind of brush up here. Maybe a drawing brush would be good. And um, just select any color you like and start painting. Or uh, your kid, you or your kid can start painting uh, I have to select the brush actually for this to work. There we go. Um, why is this? Let's set the flow to 100%, make it a little bit bigger. And there we go. Now I can, is it? I'm on the wrong layer. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. There we go. Now I'm a multiply and you can see I can color this in. Of course, the face shouldn't be red, but you know what I mean. Uh, and your kid can, of course, if the kid is on iPad or you are on iPad, you can paint with your fingers. So that is a really cool experience to do. And um, the paper doesn't get wasted. So you can color this in again and again and again. And you can download hundreds of pictures without spending money. But at the same time, this is a really important exercise, especially for children to find out about their creativity and potential and to learn how to experiment uh, with colors and design. So this is a really important process. Okay, so this was the three, uh, no, sorry, the five different cool tricks for back to school. And I wish you a very successful school year and uh, uh, as parents or grandparents, a lot of fun with your children and grandchildren. And see you in the next episode. If you like my videos, by the way, maybe subscribe to my channel. I do two tutorials per week. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get my original Affinity files with all the layers. You can get feedback on your own creations and you can suggest to me um, new episodes and discuss with me about topics that are interesting for you. Thank you very much and see you in the next episode. Bye.